You're unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hey there, Mr. Bell here with Unbelievable Physics. Today we're going to expand on last time's lesson by talking about position and velocity graphs. Let's start by taking a look at our first position versus time graph. Position is simply a description of where you are. It doesn't say how far you've gone, just simply that you're at some point. In physics, we like to abbreviate things to make life simpler. So time would be abbreviated as T. Mass is shortened to just be M. Force is written as a capital F and position. Well, position is slightly different. We shorten position to be the letter X. While it may seem a bit weird to have X for position, it actually makes sense. I mean, think about a pirate map. Wherever their treasure is buried and hidden, they mark it on the map with an X. X marks the spot. So we use X for our position. Now, I don't know if that's really how we came up with it, but it sure is an easy way to remember it. So back to the graphs. If we look at a position versus time graph, it tells us the location of an object at certain points in time. For example, in this first graph, at five seconds, the object would be found at the 12 meter position. Just know that each grid line on the vertical axis is two meters. Now, at first, it may appear that the position is all we can tell from a position graph, but there's actually a lot more hidden in there. Another great thing we can find in a position versus time graph is the velocity of an object. Velocity is a rate of change in displacement divided by time, or in other words, the change in position divided by time. Put more simply, the slope of the position graph is your velocity. Wait, what? How did Mr. Bell come up with that? Well, slope is calculated by taking rise divided by run. The rise is your change in position or your displacement, and the run is your time. So slope is displacement divided by time, which is the definition of velocity. That's crazy, huh? Well, you better bell, leave it, <laughs> get it? Hey, look, hey, it's just a joke, guys, hey! We're gonna use that a billion times this year, so you're just gonna have to memorize it. Slope of position is velocity. Slope of position is velocity. Slope of position is... Another interesting thing to look at on our graph is the y-intercept. The y-intercept on a graph always shows the starting point on the graph. Since this is a position graph, it is the starting position. If it were a velocity graph, the y-intercept would be the starting velocity, which for this graph is 10 meters per second. If we had a height versus age graph, the y-intercept would be your starting height, which would be about 20 inches for girls and 21 for boys. So we can actually see a lot more from a position graph than you might originally think. We can see the position of the object over the given times. We can figure out the velocity from the slope of the line, and we can tell the initial conditions, or that starting position of the object, by looking at the y-intercept. Since we talked about velocity, let's look at a constant velocity graph for an object. This is a velocity graph. Notice that this is slightly different looking than other graphs that we have used. That's because we can now have a negative number for velocity. A negative velocity just means you're moving backwards. We typically define forward as positive and backwards as negative. In this first velocity graph, the object starts with an initial velocity of two meters per second forward, then after two seconds slows down to a half a meter per second. After another two seconds, or a total of four seconds, the object stops. So let's say we have a car driving on the highway at a constant velocity of 30 meters per second. That's roughly 60 miles per hour. What would this velocity graph look like? Well, in the first second, he is traveling 30 meters per second. In the next second, it's 30 meters per second. And in the third second, 30 meters per second. I think you get where I'm going with this. This means he is traveling at a constant velocity since his velocity is not changing with time. What would the same motion look like for a position graph? Assuming we start our timer at the zero position of the car, it is traveling at 30 meters per second. So the slope of our position graph is 30. Remember that slope of position is velocity. So we go up 30 meters per second and over by one second. For the next second, we go up another 30 meters, then over one second, etc., etc. 
So this would be the position graph for the car traveling on the highway at 30 meters per second. Now that we've learned about position and velocity graphs, let's try to read a few graphs and determine the motion of the object. Looking at this first graph, I notice it is a position graph. It travels at a constant velocity for four seconds, then stops for another four seconds. The average velocity for the first four seconds is three meters per second, since the slope of the line is three meters per second. I can tell that the object stopped since the slope of the line at the end is zero, meaning the velocity is zero. It's not moving. And this is what the velocity graph would look like for the same motion. We see the object moving at three meters per second for four seconds, then stops, so its velocity is zero. Why don't you try describing the motion of this graph and draw the velocity graph that shows the same motion. I purposely left the graph without numbers, so you don't need to calculate the slopes. I just want to see if you get the idea of how to read the graph and switch from a position graph to a velocity graph. But notice qualitatively how the slopes are different. Pause the video to write down your answers, and I'll give you the answers in five seconds. And here's the answers. How'd you do? You're unbelievable <laughs>